Our first speaker is Fields Medalist Professor Ngobao Chow. Ngobao Chow was born in Hanoi, was educated at the High School for Gifted <coughs> Students attached to Hanoi University of Science and then at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. He became professor in the University of Paris Sud 11 in 2004 and in the same year, at age 33, he received the title of professor in Vietnam, becoming that country's youngest ever professor. He has worked in Princeton and is now professor at the University of Chicago. Since 2011, Ngo Bao Chow has acted as scientific director of the newly founded Vietnam Institute for Advanced Study. Among Ngo Bao Chow's other achievements are two gold medals for Vietnam as a school student at the International Mathematics Olympiad, the first of them with a perfect score. And I know that that's an amazing um, achievement as uh, one of my Australian um, students uh, just managed to get a perfect score in this year's IMO. But when Nobel Chow was awarded the Fields Medal in 2010 for his fundamental work on automorphic forms in number theory within the Langlands program, he became the sixth Asian mathematician to receive a Fields Medal. Professor Chow, I invite you to present your lecture, The Place of Mathematics in a Developing Country, The Case of Vietnam. Gentlemen, this is just a dear point. So in my short time the lectures I try to tell a short story of Vietnamese mathematics. So this is I, I, I'm really delighted to start the story with this picture. So this is the place on the authentic in nineteen sixty seven, leading to the Democratic Republic of Vietnam uh, under the air strike. Uh, after his visit, he wrote a rather wonderful report based on his observation of mathematical life in Vietnam at that time. Let me read the English translation of this quote, and maybe some of you don't read French. So the first statement to make is a rather <coughs> extraordinary statement in view of the circumstances. In that day, mathematical life was of the name in the, in the DRV, in the Republic of Vietnam. So in this report he mentioned about the, probably the, the single uh, mathematician, Vietnamese, who was formerly granted with a PhD at that time, Professor Leventier. So um, he was um, studied in Paris before the Second World War, and for some reasons unknown to us, he defended his PhD thesis in Göttingen. So he defended his PhD thesis in Göttingen um, in 1945, just before the end of the war. Uh, back to Vietnam, he contributed a lot in the building up of Vietnamese mathematics, in particular in founding the uh, Faculty of Sciences, the Econoban, and the Institute of Mathematics. So this is another colorful character. So he spoke to uh, Takwang Biu. The picture show he's signing the Geneva Treaties, 1975. 54, uh, acting the end of France's presence in Vietnam. He was an autodidact mathematician, but which, as Gordon Dick um, observed, is unusual deep and wide knowledge. He was probably one of the best with his lectures in Vietnam. Uh, later, in 1970, uh, while being Minister of Research and Higher Education, he spent quite a lot of time solving all his exercises in self, local algebra book. And he, he kept his notebook very preciously. And I think he was the main source of inspiration for many of us. You know. 
So this is pictures of the first Vietnamese team in IMO. Uh, this uh, Dr. Bill took a decision to send uh, to, to file the first Vietnamese team. It was a political and charge decision at that time because the success of the failure of IMO would affect a lot of the national pride. Uh, so uh, fortunately, in the, in that year, the Vietnamese IMO team performed well beyond any expectations. Um, and also later. So this is a picture show Vietnamese military in, in 70s and 80s. Uh, you probably know the fellow on the right hand. Uh, so there are most people most trained in USSR and Eastern European countries. They live in very difficult conditions. Um, but um, but some of the speed was very good. Even um, the research may, may not be in the forefront of international research, but uh, they managed to have a good standard of scholarship at that time um, that has been established and respected. And now come the catastrophe. This is the year 19, and the Vietnamese economy nearly collapsed and dragged along its full uh, own research and higher education. Thousands of Vietnamese mathematicians convert themselves into businessmen. Retailers, and this is really a catastrophe for the higher education systems, which um, later, uh, I, I think, we have never fully recovered uh, the standard of scholarship it has before 1990. So this was really a dark period for Vietnamese mathematics, but also the beginning of a new renewal. So I happened to be in the um, IMO team in 1988, 89, and as a consequence of the Fulner Belly War, I lost my scholarship uh, to go to the Combinatorics in Hungary. Uh, and I was offered this course to go to France, I learned later with the algebra geometries. So I think my, my, my personal history is quite fit into Vietnamese mathematics history in the whole. So with normalization of diplomatic relations, many of the young Vietnamese uh, have a critical study abroad, and now hundreds of them become a successful mathematicians. But uh, one single issue, most of them stay in the West, some of you myself. So the next event was um, 2007 when Vietnam hosts IMO. Um, so on this occasion, almost all uh, Vietnamese IMO alumni uh, come back um, uh, and help this organization. So in a general meeting of the Vietnam Mathematical Society, the De Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen raised concern about the overall ranking of Vietnamese mathematics and suggested the idea of a natural, uh, national priority program for different mathematics. And do you know the, the tall guy in the picture? So in 2010, uh, uh, this program has been approved by the government and um, as part of this program, the Vietnam Institute for Advanced Study has been founded in 2011. As mentioned, that 10 years earlier, the, the idea, the very idea of the Institute for Advanced Study, the Red River has been, has, was pushed forward by Philip Griffith and took more than 10 years and a medal to convince people that such an institute actually good for development of science, even in a poor country like Vietnam. So see, this foundation, Vietnam, uh, the Vyazan has played a pivotal role in having back many of the enemies, many of abroad coming back for extended period and um, uh, to lead um, uh, I mean 20, um, more than 20 uh, uh, research groups mm. and you have having a lot of uh, foreign distinguished uh, mathematicians all from abroad uh, come visiting us and and we have them so keep helping organizing training programs for teachers and high school students. So that is where we are now. Um, in, in your country, mathematics enjoy a quite strong support from both the societies and the government. I think the IMO and the gifted class for mathematics 
uh, was part of the reason. But this is also part of the confusion that is very difficult to, for, for people, even um, uh, very intelligent people, to make a distinction between IMO and research and mathematics. And so they do not feel the need to support research and mathematics, many of them. So what to do? So what I say, it you appears know, very bad, bad news, but I don't, I don't know if I, um, I have anything uh, uh, more clearly to say. So first, is we have to keep nurturing our IMO classes, and very important to raise standard research and mathematics. And in, in order to help people to uh, get involved in mathematics, it's very important to provide very ambitious program of applied mathematics. And, and Last year, in, uh, in developing countries, there is really no ever towers for, for mathematics to keep, keep to have continuous engagement with society. Thank you very much.